All right, let's get straight into it. Hello, welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about how the political compass is bull crap. Can't say curse words until the first five seconds, first like 50 seconds, I'm sorry, but let's get directly into it. So I'm talking today about why the political compass is stupid, bull crap, and just annoying to anybody who has ever thought about it, ever considered it. We're going to talk about why the compass is stupid, and we're going to go through all the points. So first, why is the compass inaccurate? Well, first of all, I have a picture here of the entire compass. So we have authoritarian left, authoritarian right, libertarian left, libertarian right. So this is a this is where um, a lot of people think that our economy is right is right here. So we think the center has moved. So the center is moving. So the center since the center has already moved authoritarian left like most people think it has, then people are kind of being like, well, uh, why is the, what, if the center moved already and people think that the center is now right here, then this is already inaccurate. So yeah, that's step one. The compass is outdated. Pretty obvious. I mean, it literally just says state imposed collectivism. We're going to talk about why collectivism is a bad word to describe authoritarianism and libertarianism because collectivism is kind of universal and also is not really present in a lot of authoritarian systems. So it's kind of weird to call it collectivism, but we'll move on. Second point, 90% of all first attempts are the same. So I don't know if you're like me, but in middle school, usually around seventh or eighth grade, your social studies teacher would tell you to all log into this website and take a political compass test. So if you were like me, you probably answered basically reasonable answers to all the questions unless you're that really weird kid that would be like either I'm just gonna say don't know for all of them or you're really that you're that weird kid that was like I'm gonna answer like a super villain for some of these because I just want to see what happens and everyone would take it and then you would look at your scores and you would compare it to people because at this point you were just being like hey uh, we're all in the same place but like who's closest to the center or like, did someone get anything different in the green box? Because let's be honest, when you took this test at, at first, and you answered everything reasonably, because you didn't know anything about politics, the only thing you knew about politics is that that the U.S. had been involved in some wars, and now we were in a, like, a stable time of peace, because apparently the war in Afghanistan didn't last 20 years, because in middle school we learned that the war in Afghanistan happened in 2001, and we didn't we weren't we weren't told that we were still in it so it was still going on while we were in school and we had no idea so we thought we were in peace at that point which is kind of bs if you think about it but we all kind of learned history from our middle school and, and elementary school teachers and they weren't as biased as our high school teachers were they were just supposed to teach history directly out of the book so when we we didn't really have any political comprehension whatsoever i'm talking in american schools Maybe English schools or German schools or French schools taught history differently, but for our schools, they kind of taught us just like the mainline American history and not that much about the rest of the world besides the World War II and World War I stuff. So when everyone took this test, and I have 10 tests on here from my friends who shared their scores about how they answered back in their old days. And as you can see, someone did actually get authoritarian left, so that is kind of and someone also did get libertarian right but most people got libertarian left because apparently this corner this green corner is called communitarian and everyone i remember everyone in my class for the most part was asking the teacher what does communitarian mean and then our teacher was just like oh you believe in like collective action and like everyone being themselves and stuff like that and it's like oh that makes sense uh, communitarian you believe that community should be the community and that we're all connected in some way but like that's not what communitarian means at all and your teacher was probably just being like i don't know so i'm just going to give you some bs answer because everyone's in this because everyone was most likely either in the green box or if you were in another box you were somewhere close to the green box you weren't getting any like hard authoritarian left or hard authoritarian any score unless you're really trying so the fact that 90 percent of all firsts are the attempts are the same kind of shows you where education leans. Education leans more towards being sympathetic to the community instead of unsympathetic to the community, and also leans more libertarian than authoritarian, which is good, but also it's like, 
the fact that the political compass is kind of showing that education is not central and then it's more libertarian than not kind of shows that the compass itself is not kind of centered it's just a blank space and of course we've already talked about how it's inaccurate next one oxymorons exist and destroy the compass so the two biggest problems here is that authoritarianism is seen as the opposite of libertarian now you may think that's that's true because you would be going based off this definition right here of libertarianism uh, freedom from all control and authoritarianism controls all freedoms now you may be going off those but would, would you like to know that there are two oxymorons that do exist in the political spectrum? A libertarian, a libertarian authority, authority is freedom to control all aspects of life without input from others. So think of it like a king. Think of it like a monarchy. They're allowed to control everything. They can leave their, live their life as free as they want, but they still have the ability to control other people without input from others because they're the king and queen and they make decisions they can listen to advisors but they can also have advisors killed because they don't want to listen to their opinions so libertarian authority is free to control is free to live their lives but they control the aspects of other life well that's an oxymoron you're free to live your life but you control all everyone else's so i mean it's just kind of stupid that an oxymoron like that is allowed to exist because you're both authoritarian but also you're libertarian because you believe in freedom for me but not for thee so of course uh, i mean that oxymoron exists so that can't exist on the compass because it's either you're full authoritarian or full, full libertarian you can't be both because both are the complete opposites of each other and if we go into authoritarian libertarian a person who wants to individually control others freedoms and lives without resistance so this would I, I would describe as the Jim Crow era in the US. White Southerners wanted the complete control over black Southerners' lives because they didn't want them to have any freedoms. But they wanted to have the freedom to, to be superior over the other. So that's what I would say is the Jim Crow era. Sorry, my cat wants a window. So yeah, the Jim Crow era was authoritarian libertarian. A person, the white Southerners wanted to control all the black Southerners because they believed that they were superior. I mean, they were wrong, obviously, but like, that's an authoritarian libertarian. Someone who believes that they want individual, because they don't want the government coming in, because when the government came in, they took, they tried to take away Jim Crow. But no, these people who want Jim Crow laws are saying, hey, we want the government to stay out of here. We want the national government. We don't want the national government to tell us that we can't make Jim Crow laws. Because they want to be free from the national government, which is trying to make it so that they won't be authoritarian onto black Southerners, on black people in general, and other minorities in general. So they want to be libertarian from the national government. But in the state and local government, they want to be authoritarian because they want to rule other people's lives as inferior human beings to them. So that's an example of an authoritarian libertarian. You want to be free from the national government, but you want to assert authoritarian control over a population in state and local governments. So yeah, where is a libertarian? What is it? Where is an authoritarian libertarian going to be? Because they want to be free from the national government, but want to be authoritarian in the state and local governments. Where is a libertarian authority supposed to be? They want to be free for themselves. They want freedom for their for their lives, but they don't want freedom for other lives. Freedom for me, but not for thee. So yeah, the oxymorons exist and destroy the compass, because you can't be both extremes at the same time. So that just destroyed the compass. Another argument for why the compass is not bad. It's not bad, bad, bullshit. It's past the 50 minute mark, so I can say that. Being completely neutral isn't the center. So if you try, like that dumb, that dumb, that douchebag in high school who's like, I'm just going to answer don't know or I'm neutral on the matter for every question. Well, I did that. And what happens is you're still in the green box. You're not in the center. You're in here. This is where my thing was. I said don't know or neutral on every question, and I ended up here. I'm not in the center. I'm still left-leaning libertarian. So that just shows you that 
The same thing as when we said 90% of all first attempts were kind of in this green box. Even if you're completely neutral, it puts you in the green box. So center isn't even possible. So this central thing right here is not even possible. So why even bother having a center if you can't even get to it? The next argument is voluntary collectivism is just anarchy. So looking at this collectivism argument down here, voluntary regional collectivism, that's just anarchy. Just because there's no government doesn't mean there's no collectivism. Before government, human society existed in small groups that traded and bartered with each other in a primal not nomadic economy. So before governments, there were still groups of humans that engaged in collectivism. But we consider that anarchy because they didn't have a government system. They just had, they were just like helping each other survive. Like cavemen would help each other, but like they didn't really care that much about each other. If one of them died, they were just like, oh, that's fine. We'll just try it. We'll just, uh, you know, we'll just survive with everyone else. And that's the argument. If anarchy happened in the modern era, eventually humans would need to work together to survive and thrive. Like you would eventually need to help Bob out or Bob would die, and do you really want that on your conscience? We've evolved past cavemen, so we honestly care about each other at somewhat primal level. So if Bob dies to hypothermia and you had a space heater in your house that you found out how to work, then like, yeah, you would rather help Bob than just let him die outside. So I mean, yeah, eventually we would engage in collectivism, voluntary collectivism, even if we didn't have a government. So if we didn't even have a government, you wouldn't even be on this political compass because the political compass is describing your view on government. But if you don't, ha if you believe that there should be no government and there should be like no, nothing whatsoever, you're anarchy. And libertarian is not anarchy. Libertarian is like you are free to do whatever you want from the government, but like the government still exists. It's just anarchy is not on the political compass for a reason. And like since there, since there's anar anarchy argument, like. You would think it'd be in the libertarian left or libertarian right for anarchy, but you won't even be on the compass, so it just makes no sense. The democracy argument for this is that a pure direct democracy would be ruled by the majority of everyone. A pure democracy doesn't require a leadership structure as it's mostly determined by mob rule, the majority of the group, which can change constantly. So is pure democracy just mob rule or is it just anarchy with the right to vote? I would say that pure democracy, if you think about it in a pure direct sense, with no elected leadership because you don't need representatives because it's direct democracy. Everyone votes, everyone gets one vote, and whatever has more majority of everyone votes wins. There's no leadership because it's just democracy. It's just majority rule, mob rule. So it's like a pure democracy also has collectivism, but like there is, there doesn't have to be a, a government in a pure democracy. In fact, there isn't one, because why would you need a leadership if the leader doesn't determine anything? The votes are held by the majority of people, so you don't need a government. You just have a bunch of people that control it. So, like, there is no government. So a pure democracy doesn't even have government, but does have voluntary collectivism. So that one, that pure democracy would also not be on the political compass. And finally, we have the fascism argument. Up in here, because fascist government would be in the authoritarian level up here, fascism is mostly defi defined by the compass to be in the authoritarian right quadrant, so it'd be right here. But in, the, in order to survive, fascist regimes such as the Nazi regime also needed, often needed to divide people into factions, therefore the fascist government, creating an in-group, in the Nazi case, the Aryan race, and many outgroups. Jews, Romas, Soviets, Communists, anybody who anybody who they wanted to just kill off or not be in the in-group to hold power. So how is a fascist regime an example of state-infobed collectivism if the primary goal of fascism is to, to divide people into groups? That's not state-imposed collectivism, that's just state-imposed dividing people. Like the opposite of collectivism, the state the, not, the fascist regime didn't want you to work together. It wanted you to be divided against the minorities of the society so that the majority would take out the minorities and that would allow the fascist government to survive. Because eventually, if they did eliminate everyone in the Holocaust, they would just find another place. Like, okay, so now that everyone in the Aryan race is safe, everyone who's not a certain height is... Uh, any short people are not full-blooded Aryans. 
that's what they would have to do because only in order to survive the fascist regime has to create a scapegoat has to divide people because otherwise the people will rise up against so for a fascist regime they would have to keep creating a smaller and smaller in group and a majority out group to quash so yeah a fascist government even if it is try state imposed it's not collectivism because even though you would think it's state imposed collectivism for authoritarianism fascism doesn't work like that fascism doesn't use collectivism fascism does the opposite of collectivism wants people to be turned against each other so fascism being authoritarian right doesn't make sense because it's not collectivism it's different it's state imposed yes but it's not collectivism it's something else and then finally edge tests are impossible so i am trans positive not i'm not a trans person but i'm like an ally because my friend is trans and i don't want to be like offensive against her so there's this guy called matt walsh who's extremely transphobic and he made a video where he tried to be as authoritarian right as possible he did every question as authoritarian right as possible and his test was right here so he didn't even make it to the edge so what i'm saying is is that these edge cases are not are not you know there's no way to be an edge case because you can't make it here he tried to be as authoritarian right as possible and he didn't even come close to making making the edge he was very close to being full authoritarian but he was never fully right which doesn't make sense because he tried to be as right as possible so edge cases are impossible if you try and be the most right wing you can't even make it try to be most left wing you can't even make it Heck, I, I told you guys, I tried to be the most center as possible by doing everything as I don't know or neutral, and I didn't even make it to the center. So if center cases are impossible and edge cases are, impo are impossible, then how are the edges accurate? So now let's move on to the secondary argument, and that is illogical test examples. So this is an example of a bunch of political leaders. As you can see, Hitler, Stalin, Obama, Trump, Mao, Lenin... And then we have also have Bernie Sanders, Washington, George Washington, and Jefferson. So what is the problem here? So there's a lot of problems. First, the big one, why are Hitler and Stalin the same level of authoritarian when Hitler was clearly more authoritarian than Stalin? I mean, Stalin had a political party at least, and he still had advisors. And when he died, eventually he was overtaken by someone. The difference between a communist and a fascist is that a communist believes that they still need advisors and they still need people to like help them run the government. The problem with Hitler is that he was a fascist. And we've already described how fascism doesn't really exist on this chart because even if it is authoritarian right, fascists don't believe in collectivism so they can't even be here in the first place. But why is Hitler on the same level as Stalin when he was clearly more authoritarian? He believed in only himself to run the government. Stalin believed that there should at least be successors after him, and he still personally picked the successors even if he would die, which he eventually did. So him and Hitler are not the same level of authoritarian. Stalin's really bad, but like Hitler should not be on the same level as him, because Hitler was way worse. Next one, why are Mao Zedong, leader, former leader of communist China, um, Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, and Marx on the same level of left? Because they're clearly not all left-wing. First of all, Mao is a communist dictator. So he'd be more authoritarian right than authoritarian left. Secondly, why is Lenin the same as Mao when Lenin believed in less control? Lenin believes not in less con I mean, obviously less control because he's more south, more libertarian than Mao. But he's not the same left. Mao was not full left-wing. Mao was more Stal- why is Stalin left too? That makes no sense. Because Stalin believed that there should still be um, institutions that were there before, just controlled by the government. So like, Mao and Stalin were not left-wing. In any case, if they were left-wing, they'd be more related to Castro, if anything. If Mao and, Ka and Stalin were more on Castro's level of left, I could make an argument. But Stalin and Mao are not anywhere close to Lenin's level of left, and Lenin is not even close to Marx. Marx is full left. So why is Lenin not even close to Marx's theory? He tried to be like Marx's theory, but he was nowhere close, because he still wanted total control of the government, which is why he's authoritarian while Marx is libertarian. 
Next one, why is Gandhi around the same place as Mandela? I just feel like the person who thought Gandhi should be next to Mandela was just like, oh, they're like the same person. Gandhi was horrifically anti-Semitic. He said that the Jewish people should accept their fate in the Holocaust because it's better to just be peaceful and they shouldn't violently rebel. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, when a bunch of Jews in, in a Holocaust death camp rose up against the Nazis, Gandhi didn't like that. He said you should just be peaceful, peacefully protest while you're being burned to death. So yeah, Gandhi was anti-Semitic. So why is he next to Mandela, who was not anti-Semitic? He was the opposite. Because even though they both believed in the same thing of like peaceful protest and stuff, Gandhi was way more was way more violent when it came to how the Holocaust should have been handled than Mandela. So they should not be on the same place of left. If anything, Gandhi should be more right than in, than Mandela. Like they can still be in the green box, but Mandela should be more towards Marx and Gandhi should be should move more right. Next one, being Jefferson being more libertarian than Gandhi. What the frick? Who in the heck thought that Jefferson, a guy who believed that only white farmers deserved to, the right to vote, and didn't even believe that women or the slaves he owned should be freed, is more libertarian than Gandhi, who wanted to liberate his entire people from India? Sure, Gandhi was anti-Semitic, but why the heck is Jefferson more libertarian than Gandhi? Gandhi wanted women to vote and everyone to vote. Like, he was okay with even the British standing by, staying in India as long as they didn't take over the complete government. He was okay with them still having a military base there. So why the heck is Jefferson, who believed that, one, slaves should be slaves, so he's already authoritarian in that book, but if you want to make the argument that he believed that people should be their own individual self, you know, like homesteading and farmers should not have, the government should not metal in farming or try and make and he wanted to be more about the individual manhood that's cool and all and he can be libertarian for that but put him next to washington because like at least they're somewhat close together why is gandhi more authoritarian than jefferson is when jefferson believed that not only should slaves be slaves so we think gandhi should be a slave because he wasn't white but he also believes that women shouldn't be able to vote either or shouldn't have rights the same rights as men either so jefferson isn't a libertarian he's just like a semi-libertarian like put him up here next to Washington and Friedman don't put him next don't put him as more libertarian than Gandhi man that's just BS and then finally Bernie Sanders is a socialist so why is he on the line between being libertarian and authoritarian Sanders believes in Marxism more than Lenin he says that Lenin was terrible he also says that Castro was terrible so why is Sanders right next to why is Sanders on the line he should be more next to Marxism and Chomsky Chomsky is a socialist. Here's Marxism. Sanders should be somewhere between Chomsky and Marxism, not between Marxism and Maoism. So yeah, I think that's BS as well. And the final point is, why is Pakistan a theocratic government on the left side of the compass? Well, yeah, I believe that Pakistan should not be on the left side of the compass. It should be on the right side. Because Saudi Arabia is a theocratic government as well. So I think Pakistan should be on the right side because it's theocratic. It believes in theocratic control of the government. So, theocratism is basically like lesser fascism. So, And then, I think the final point is the whole versus the parts. The final argument for why the political compass is bullcrap is that there are many types of libertarianism, and if you wanted to say it, classical libertarianism, the number one, should be right here where the number six is. Because that's where classic libertarian that's the first view of libertarianism. So that's where libertarian should be, but it's not. One is a libertarian right, because classical libertarianism believes in laissez faire capitalism and believes in capitalism, which is still regional voluntary collectivism, because if you don't work you don't eat, but like it's still author it's still right wing, because it still believes that it should be your civic duty to work. So it's still libertarian right. So libertarianism itself is more right-wing than left-wing, if you want to go by classical libertarianism. So even if we want to compare it, this is the center of libertarianism. This is where the real center, this, this point right here, should be right here, because this is where the center of libertarian is. And obviously, once we got the theocratic libertarian, we got more fascists. When we got um, 
civil libertarian, we got more leftist. When we got economic libertarian, we went more right wing again. Then we went social libertarian is is almost le- completely left wing libertarianism. There's just so many different types of libertarianism, and they're all sprouting from this area that is not even over here. It's not even at the central, it's not even at the edge of libertarian. It's not full libertarian, it's just libertarian right. So even libertarianism has some aspects of authoritarianism, which gets back to the oxymoron argument. So I kind of want to go into my theory of how the political compass should work. And I think it should work, there should be multiple spectrums. And how should we make a spect- a political spectrum? Well, I think we should do it similar to how piano is organized. So middle C is the mid- is the middle of the piano keyboard, and that and that should be a pure centrist. What does that mean? A pure centrist has little to no political knowledge or bias. Basically, they have they're basically what happens when a kid takes a political compass test for the first time. They have no they have little to no political knowledge or bias, and they're and they're free to learn about whatever they want. So like their middle seat, they don't really have that much. Kids, people who don't really care about politics, agnostic people about politics, they should be in the center because they don't really have opinions on much. But then we go into center right and center left. Center right is one octave right of middle seat, and center left is one octave left of middle seat. If you don't know what an octave is, an octave is basically this C to this C. Everything in between middle C and this other C right here, going to the right, is an octave. So this is the center right and center left. So you're still going from the left wing to the center and the right wing to the center. So you're still between right and center or left and center, but you're still aiming towards being center. The next is, uh, I think it's radical right actually. Yeah, radical right. So radical right and radical left is two octaves right of middle C and two octaves left of middle C. So obviously, you're more right wing than center, so you're radical right. So you're still not far right, but you're radical right. You're not center right, you're not far right, you're just in the middle. You're just right wing. Just like over here, you're not center left, you're not really that towards the center, but you're also not that towards the far left either. So you're just a progressive, you're just radical left, a progressive, similar to my views. And then we have far right and far left. Three octaves right of middle C and three octaves left of middle C. So you're the farthest right you can be. You're basically the farthest away from the center you can possibly be, and you're farthest left away from the center as you possibly be. But as you notice, there's some keys that are three octaves left, that are more than three octaves left of middle C. I would call this anarchy because anarchy would be the farthest left you can go because anarchy is more of a leftist argument just like totalitarianism is more of a right-wing argument full control full freedom from government full freedom from government is anarchy full control is totalitarianism which is still a far-right ideology but anarchy is not really a far-left art ideology so honestly Anarchy is more left, and that's why I believe that it should go middle C, center left, radical left, far left, anarchy, or middle C, center right, radical right, far right. So yeah, that's going to be the video on why the political compass is bullshit. Hope you like my arguments. Remember to like the video if you like it, dislike if you don't, subscribe if you really like it, comment down below your thoughts, and join the channel if you want, getting custom notes, custom banners, and custom perks when the discord finally is activated thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day as usual and of course toodaloo